I'm Eileen. I have six boys, four are living here. James, who's 18, David, who's going to be 17, Ronnie's 14, and Josh is 11. And I have a lot of stuff in my house. My name is Ron, I'm Eileen's husband. Living the way we live is just not normal for anybody. Basically, to me, it's like living in a trash pile. My husband and my children have been on me for quite a long time to fix the problem. But how come you won't help me to fix it? She always says she, nobody helps her, but when you try to help her, she freaks out. You know, when you throw something away. Not in that bag, not in that bag, not in that bag. Um, not in that bag. I'm James, I'm 18, and I'm Eileen's son. It's very crazy in that house, to say the least. They always say you yell. Yeah, I do, because when I talk, you sit there like I'm not talking. But when I yell, I at least get your attention. She starts yelling, I just kind of sit there and look at her and just tune it out. I'm Steven, and I'm 20, and I'm Eileen's son. It's been two years since I've lived in that house. When I left, it was pretty cluttered. It's kind of gotten to the point to where they got to do something about the house because it's not getting any better. It's just been getting worse and worse and worse. Steven said if the house doesn't get cleaned up, he said he's going to call the health department to have his younger brothers taken away because this is not a good environment for them to live in. They're my younger brothers, and they need a better life. They need a clean house, and it's really hard seeing them live in that house. I am not worried if they were to come in and say, we're going to take your kids away, because <laughs> it would be a very good lesson for them to learn. I'm a fireman. If we came to a house with the uh, living conditions were bad enough, as professional firefighters, we're all mandated to report it. You know, you're supposed to take action, but you just don't want to take action. My children have to be taken away, so that's my dilemma. I think if my dad would have done something a long time ago, it would have helped resolve a lot of the problems that there are now. I haven't been strong enough to nip it in the bud before it even got started. I love my kids more than anything else in this world. I just want them to have a normal life. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Woo! This is a <laughs> glorious day. However, we've got a bit of a disastrous situation on the inside of this house. My name is Dorothy Brenninger, and I am a professional organizing expert. I specialize in hoarding. How fast this whole two days goes is dependent on who? All of us. You. Where most hoarders will say, well, something happened and I'm responsible for it, Eileen likes to blame not only her husband, Ronald, but also her children. This is all somebody else's fault. OK. Are all of you ready to go? Yes. OK. That way. What I'd like you to do is start gathering up some things. And we'll sort it outside, not in here. OK. So you can see we're coming down this way because we want to get access to okay. the bedrooms. And but... to that door, yeah. All right, Mr. Firefighter. I would like for you to tell me, as a firefighter, what would you be required to say <laughs> to a family with a front door like this? <laughs> Better clean it up or, or somebody's going to die when, there, when there's an emergency. Ron, our heroic firefighter, actually said, this is a death trap. Ron, you live here. Sir, get a voice. 
When it comes to a death trap, get a uh, voice. I, my voice is not heard. I just don't understand why he won't take a stand for himself, his family, and his home. Yeah, yeah. Trash? Nope. Keeps the case. Can we, like, donate two of these and keep one? Put them in the bag and throw them in there. You don't need any of this. Steven. Mom. Move on. Oh. Steven, move on. It's a broken Lego. You don't need it. Steven, that's no. not I broken. The Lego. I told you, I sat over there this morning, and I knew what every oh. single piece goes to. Okay. I don't get where the logic is in anything that she says or does. So here's one box that you've sorted through. These are all kids' balances. Yes, because I have a thing that I'm going to make for my granddaughter. Your granddaughter doesn't live here. Josh and Ronnie, you know they, they all live I'm ready to walk away, Steven. We're going to get nothing done, because I'm going to get pissed off, and I'm going to walk away. No, don't raise your eyebrows. Like, oh, good, well, I'll take care of it. I have loved that child. I have done everything for him. My name is Dr. Robin Zazio. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist, and I specialize in OCD and compulsive hoarding. I mean, do you think it's safe to say that they just don't know what to do? My problem with all of my children, and Stephen included, is they think they're the parent, and that's how they talk to me and treat me. Eileen blames everything on the boys. She's not taking any responsibility for all the stuff she's brought in the house. They have really been worn down. I think this whole thing is a trash bag. She's not going to think that, though. I'm going to tell you right now, it's a Steven bag. I know it is. Look at that brand new <sighs> This is No, fixable. but it's not. Is he not intelligent enough to look and know Can you that it's not full of CDs? Oh, there's my yams for my cinnamon marshmallows. Steven, you should go away right now. You should go away. Steven continues to be pinned as the bad guy and the scapegoat. The reason why is because he's the only one that's challenging Eileen. I, I wouldn't throw your stuff out, do you? No, I wouldn't. Everybody else avoids her, lets her keep stuff that clearly should go because they don't want to deal with her anger. I'm going to go wash my own off. Can we have somebody do it for you so I'll that you like can that. keep Please, oh, please. I, I need a timeout. I'm gonna beat the out of it if I don't. We now have a second crisis because your entire house is now sitting in your backyard. The junk crew right now is simply putting all of your stuff back in boxes, which is gonna go back in your house again. What I've noticed is that when your family challenges you, you stop them. And you use a lot of anger to get them to back off, and it's been very effective. I've also seen with you, Ron, that you don't want to make any decisions about the stuff that is in your home. I don't know what to do. OK. Are you afraid of Eileen? Easier for me to just give her away. But if you <laughs> keep shying away, then she can keep using that to control the situation. As long as he continues to do that, it's not going to bring them together as parents and a united front to bring this family back together. What are the decisions that Ron could make without you? Electronics. I don't know anything about the electronics. OK, or the... good. Right. We've Your got a station. whole pile over there. Ron, electronics, boys, Thanks. that way. OK? Thank yep. you. I can honestly say I don't know what it went to because I don't know where it came from. It looks like it goes to a, a monitor. So where are all the computer monitors? That... They're already dealt with. Your husband dealt with them already. Are they gone? That's what I'm asking. Are they gone? Yeah. Did you get rid of all the monitors, Ron? Yeah. You know what? I'm done dealing. I just, I need to do this alone. I just need to do it alone. She gave Ron full permission, her husband, to handle the electronics. And now, because she sees this bottom and it's not attached to a monitor, she wants to know why. The fact of the matter is, it's the end of the day, and I have one half truck. That's it. No. You know what, Steven? Get off no. the truck and leave me no. be. Mom. Not, not like everybody thinks. Mom. This box, 
I can put notebooks in because it says notebooks, and I know that my books and stuff that I have are going to fit exactly in that box, and I don't have to worry about Maybe it. We saved some of those for you. She saved you over 100 boxes, it is. And some it is. just like this. Yeah. I mean, listen. It's respect. That's what it's about. Eileen, nobody's trying to disrespect you. No. You don't need to keep holding on to all these boxes. Not saying, oh, I can't let go of any of my boxes because, oh my God, I'll die without my boxes. Eileen, hey, not but, but that's the way you're acting, Eileen. Do not make this about. I have this obsession with boxes. Well, that's well, you are hoarding boxes. Uh, yeah, you are. Not, but, but that's it's what not, you're doing. And I'm going to tell you. I'm very fixated on how I want to get things done and be able to get it done for once in my life. Wow, am I frustrated. But you know what? This is the illness. We've not done anything except give her family space to live in and package this up in a way that's organized so that when the aftercare people come in, that they can help her as best they can. When I got here, this was clearly a CPS situation. Now it is a safe home for the kids to live in. The problem is Eileen did not get rid of anything. At this point, unless she starts to acknowledge that she has a problem that needs to be treated, her prognosis is very poor.